Well, I guess Forrest is on the line. Yes, he's on the line. Yes. Everybody, the entire board is, uh, is present. I heard the uh, uh, Secretary Treasurer Reyna's on the line. I, I, I'm on video. Everybody can see me. Oh, congratulations. Thank you very much. I did it by myself. Julio, you, you're on the line? Yes, sir, Chairman. Okay. Juan yes, sir, Carlos I'm here. Duncan? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Kamel? Present. And Frank Bottle? Present. Okay, great. So, uh, Pilar, I'm just having trouble logging in, logging in. I'm not sure why, but uh, I, I can only get on the line. So, uh, let's go ahead and go uh, to the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation. Dear Father God, bless us as we gather here today. May you be present in the mouths of all who speak, in the ears of all who listen, and at the heart of all we do and say. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, Pilat, uh, any, uh, we've got quorum, any public comment? No, Chairman, no public comment. Okay, let's go to resolution 2023 14, consideration and approval of the fiscal year 2023 2022 financial statements and independent officer report. Yes, sir, Chairman. We've got uh, Luis Lopez and Ricky Longoria with Burton McCumber to uh, present the uh, the audit to the board. So, Ricky, please. Thank you, for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, I'm Ricky Longoria, just for the record, uh, partner with Burton McCumber and Longoria, and I got here Luis Lopez, uh, who was who is an audit manager with a firm and is really the one uh, most responsible for the direct oversight of the of the of the audit itself. Um, as I mentioned er er earlier, uh, you know, I, and, you know I, I realize this is just a highlight of y'all day, but as Mr. Reyna says, absolutely not. <laughs> but I believe him <laughs> because. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, appreciate you all, you know, facilitating uh, uh, an efficient meeting just just via Zoom, considering I think this is the only item on y'all's agenda today. Uh, so we're going to go over a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to go first. I'll let Luis go over the actual audit report itself. Um, I don't know whether y'all received hard copies or whether y'all receive things via electronically. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are two documents. One is the audit report itself with auditor's report letter. Uh, and then there's a separate letter, and it's, it's just generally referred to as called the governance letter, and that's the part that I'm going to go over. I'm certainly not going to read it in any detail. Uh, it's a letter that you, you've actually been accustomed to receiving in the past. Uh, I'm just going to point out just a handful of items within the letter, um, if that's okay. Um, within the governance letter, just point, just confirming a couple of things, some, some of it pretty obvious. Well, we are talking about the year ended. Uh, excuse me, uh, December 31st, uh, 2022, uh, confirming that our audit was uh, conducted in accordance of not just generally accepted auditing standards and government auditing standards, which is consistent with that of last year. But in addition to this year, um, the, the scope of our audit it was expanded to, to include the Single Audit Act. Uh, for the 2022 year, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the RMA received, I think, $36 million worth of federal funding via TxDOT grant uh, uh, that y'all uh, received, and that triggered, if you will, it's called the Single Audit Act. Uh, from y'all's perspective, perspective, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot from our perspective. It just means that we have to do more work. Um, so just confirming those things. A couple of other things uh, in terms of like what's new within the audit, uh, the audit report itself, uh, you know, accounting standards and it continued to evolve and change. Uh, at a pace that I'll be honest with you, I, I wish they would slow it down a bit. But uh, for this particular year, there was a new lease standard that applied to both non-governments and governments. Um, and so that lease standard was implemented in the 2022 year. Uh, certainly, y'all don't have a significant amount of leases, uh, but nonetheless, it had to be implemented. And so that is included uh, within this audit report. 
also confirming that with any audit with any set of numbers uh, there are there are estimates included therein uh you know people think accounting is a science and it basically is you know debits have got to equal the credits uh, but there are judgments associated with with some of those numbers and just acknowledging within this letter you know, that the more significant judgments associated with developing your financial statements one is any depreciation expense that you may have on fixed assets and obviously as you as you put these projects uh uh, as, as you complete them and and the people start using the assets, that depreciation is going to uh, become significantly more. Uh, and then also any allowance for uh, for any bad debt, if you're re any receivables from grants, county, cities, uh, w whatever the case may be, but in any allowances related to the collectability of any amounts due to uh, to the organization. Also, too, just want to acknowledge you know, the obvious. We're sitting here on uh, may may 3rd in his and if you look at, at at history uh certainly the latest that we've been able to present an audit report uh i'm sure people a lot and man and management has been keeping you up to date as to the reasons for that um certainly next year uh, we hope that that uh that that resolves itself uh so that we're able to present any and what i consider to be the normal time schedule so uh, i just want to just acknowledge that as being obvious um there is a section called corrected and uncorrected mis misstatements and just you know during the course of an audit there are there are what we consider to be two types of adjustments uh to the books and records that, that, that we make one is adjustments that management derives as they prepare for audit uh and they give us uh, to post on their behalf so we're always on working off uh, the same set of numbers the other set of adjustments are those adjustments that management did not come up with but as a result of our audit procedures uh we we propose them uh, to be recorded. Uh, and just for informational purposes, attached to this governance letter, you'll see the types of adjustments that we came up with during the course of the audit. Confirming that there were no disagreements with, with management, I, I will say, and I wanna thank them, uh, management. They've always been um, very good uh, in providing us the information that we have when they too have it themselves. Uh, and they've always been extremely helpful. And I, I think they, they they understand, you know, the purpose of the audit, the value of the audit, and how important it is to get a good audit done. Uh, confirming that management uh, does accept responsibility for these financial statements, although we may have may, even though we may have assembled the financial statements, all the underlying transactions, we had nothing to do with that, right? Uh, management and in and and, uh, and the organization. You know all, all that all that heavy lifting you all did so there is some responsibility not all responsibility accepted by management with respect to the with, with respect to the numbers i'm not going to go over the rest of the items i just wanted to highlight just a handful of key items within this particular letter um and so i don't know if anybody has any questions at this point uh, i tend to be a very quick talker so if i'm speaking too fast just let me know um and if you don't have any questions i'll let Luis take it over with respect to the audit report Good afternoon. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Luis Lopez. I'm a manager here with Burton McCumber uh, in Longoria. I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, on page six, which is the independent auditor's report. As it relates to, to this presentation, I'm going to try to keep it at a, at a very high level. Um, one of the things that this year was a, a big year for the RMA uh, and, and uh, you had some some things that were different than 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 in the prior years and comparing to maybe last year or maybe four or five years from now in that this year uh we finally got that 365 tollway uh project uh underway uh with the issuance of the 2022 a and b bonds and the, that funding from TechStot. and so as i go through the report i'll kind of just highlight uh where you see those changes uh, within the financial statements uh, being reflected. So starting off with the independent auditors report, at the very top on page six, the this, that second paragraph is our audit opinion. This is, uh, we are issuing an unmodified opinion, which is consistent with the prior years. And basically what that is, is we're basically saying that the financial statements are fairly stated in all material respects. As, as Ricky had mentioned this year, we did have the implementation of, of a new lease standard that was required to be implemented. 
two paragraphs down, you, you'll see a heading called Emphasis of a Matter, Change in Accounting Principle. Here, we're basically just outlining, uh, again, letting you know that there was a new a change in accounting principle and making reference to the notes within the financial statements where you have additional detail uh, explaining uh, the effects of, of those uh, of that implementation. We skip over to page eight again. Uh, just highlighting some things that were different this year, as Ricky mentioned this year, uh, we did have a single audit. Uh, and in that, having had expenditures of federal awards, there is a a schedule of expenditures of federal awards that is required to be presented as supplementary information, which is included within this report. We do issue an opinion, um, an opinion on that schedule in relation to the financial statements. And in this case, in our opinion, the schedule of expenditures of federal awards uh, is fairly stated in all material respects in relation to the financial statements as a whole. So that is new. You won't see that uh, last year again because last year you didn't have those that federal those federal expenditures as as you did this year. Jumping right uh, right into the financial statements on page fourteen. Again, just highlighting the the major differences as compared to the prior year, and and just thinking about all the construction activity, thinking about the issuance of the bonds, thinking about the that those additional revenues that you didn't have last year in, in that federal funding that was passed through through, through TxDOT. Uh, just looking at that statement of net position, of course, your your cash and investments increased just as an overall the proceeds from the, the issuance of the bonds. Uh, your construction and progress uh, increased about six, $68.6 6 million dollars. Uh, again, not having that funding, now having uh, started on that 365 tollway that had a significant increase. Uh, the implementation of that new lease standard that we mentioned uh, in the prior year, uh, they're near, near the middle of the page under capital assets. Now you have a right to use asset building line item and, and that last I line item within capital assets is accumulated amort amortization. Those again are just related to the implementation of that new lease standard. And of course, uh, we talked about the issuance of the 2022 A and B uh, series bonds. Uh, your long-term debt there increased uh, about $209 million as compared to, to the prior year. So again, this was a, a big year for the RMA. Uh, in that that project, is, that huge undertaking of the that 365 tollway is is now under construction. So you're seeing that being reflected uh, in the financial statements. If we go over to the next page, page 15, uh, this is a statement of revenues, ex expenses, and changes in net position, basically like an income statement. The biggest difference here, as compared to the prior year. Uh, Again, going back to that TxDOT grant, uh, about halfway down, halfway down the, the page under non-operating revenues and expenditures, the, the fourth line item, intergovernmental grant, you'll notice you had $36.8 million uh, in revenue uh, there, which at, the end of the, uh, which at the end of the day ended up translating to, to an overall increase in in change in net position of $32 million as a whole. And so you might be wondering, well, what about those costs associated that we spent in order to earn that money, right? And so uh, because these costs are being incurred on construction, those costs aren't being reflected on this statement. They're on, on the statement of net position as, as part of capital assets. So for this year and the year following, as you continue to expend these costs on construction, you will see that increase in, in net position uh, for the year. You will also notice the third line item from the bottom. We did have a prior period adjustment. It wasn't significant. That prior period adjustment, again, is described in the notes to the financial statements. Uh, 
that describes the implementation of the new lease standard. And that, that in essence is what that is uh, reflecting the effect of the of that new lease standard as of the beginning of the period. I won't go into there are two other reports in the back. Uh, I won't really go into them. Uh, we do have the report uh, that is related to the audit having been conducted in accordance with government auditing standards and uh, as it relates to the federal awards in accordance with the uniform guidance. Uh, these reports would be where you would typically find any uh, significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal controls or any instances of non-compliance that we may have encountered during the course of the audit. Uh, this year, I will confirm to you that we did not have any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses, nor did we uh, encounter any instances of non-compliance. And with that, uh, that concludes my presentations. If you all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions or concern for Luis on the audit? If not, could I entertain a motion uh, to approve the audit? So move, Mr. Chairman. I have a second motion, got a second? Second by Zeke. Second. Second by Zeke. All the approved. Same sign. Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, Luis, thank you very much uh, for that. Ricky, thank you again for doing our, an outstanding job on our audit this year. Uh, we appreciate you know your, your continued support uh, and, and that of your firm. Well, thank you. you uh, we've always enjoyed working with you all as well. It's mutual. So, uh, I Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Julio. Uh, in the past experiences that I've had with uh, with uh, BML, I've never basically encountered anything wrong, and, and they've always been up to date with everything. And, and thank you, Ricky and and uh, Vernon McCumber for, for for the hard work that you guys have always been done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any other business? Is there any other business we need to address today? Uh, sir, yes. The next item, uh, 1B, um, uh, resolution 2023-15, approval of the 22 annual compliance report for the Hidalgo County Regional Building Authority. Chairman, directors, uh, this is the report that's required annually. Uh, that that would work. Um, it moved over. It jumped over. That was this is a report that's uh, required annually by TxDOT under the Texas Administrative Code, Title 43, Part 1, Chapter 26, Subchapter G. Uh, and this is required to be submitted to TxDOT. In your packet is a one page, a one page uh, uh, compliance report, and it has all the rules. And the, the very left column is the compliance rule, the middle column is the compliance statement, and then the uh, Third column is a certification. And so uh, the uh, main ones are the adoption of the budget, uh, the uh, acceptance of the independent financial uh, uh, statement and audit, uh, and then now we just require the board to approve this uh, compliance report. Staff recommends approval. Okay. Are there any questions in, in regard to the compliance approval and consideration of the fiscal year 2022 annual compliance report? If not, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. I have a motion. Get second. A second. Motion and second. All in favor. Second. Aye. 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 Same sign. Approved. Uh, the motion is approved. Is there any other business? Chair, we have no further business for the board's consideration. Okay. If there are no further business, uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. I have a motion by Zeke, second by Julio. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign carries. Thank you guys for taking time today to uh, join us. I appreciate your commitment to the RMA and, and uh, wish you all to have the rest, rest of the week. Rest of the week. Thank, Thank you, you for everything. Yes, sir. See you later. Right. Thank you.